So I come from a country which I think most people would write off in conservation. We have 1.2 billion people. We have just 3% of land set aside for wildlife. But there have been incredible conservation successes. 70% um, of the world's wild tigers are in India. Um, a huge population of wild elephants are in India. But there's a lot of other wildlife species. And I, I'm tired of the debates and the rhetoric around why we need parks, don't need parks, why they work, why they don't work. And I want to kind of focus and move the conversation along to, to really talking about how are we going to get a billion people to live aside wildlife? What are we going to do? What are the solutions? And um, so I think in, in that context, I was told to say, you can say whatever outrageous thing you want to say. And th that's the first that's ever happened. But uh, so let's give it a shot. I, I think we romanticize living with wildlife. I think most of us do. Most of us live in cities, and it's easy to look at that big, cuddly picture of some furry animal. And so a lot of my work over the last uh, nine years in India has tried to look at conflict, the consequences of living with or next to wildlife. Um, so I just want to kind of show you a few pictures. This is crop loss, which affects 73% of people living next to parks. Uh, you have property damage. Elephants come and destroying people's houses. You have people having their livestock injured or killed by wild tigers and wild leopards. And a lot of the conflict work had looked at very small um, sets of case studies. So I traveled across India, uh, went to 17 sites, and what I found was that, mo that there were a lot of species causing conflict. Most mitigation measures were not working. This was surveys with over 10,000 households. Um, and most frustrating of all was that even though the government system had a compensation program in place where you could file for losses, that the government wasn't really um, responding to this. And so people were very, very frustrated. And there are uh, real consequences when you don't respond to people. Leopards are chased and injured. Elephants are ele electrocuted. Tigers are poisoned. So these are not rare images. These do occur. But I think to put it in, in perspective, and so after you know, traveling across India, spending all this time talking to people, the question was, as a scientist, we can publish a lot of papers, but where, where does that really uh, lead us? And the idea was to try and come up with a solution. So we launched this uh, project two years ago around two parks in India, which have over, between the two of them, have 300 wild tigers and uh, several thousand elephant species. There's a population density around these parks is about three, 400 people per square kilometer. We just we launched a project, which was people calling in on a, on a toll-free number, telling us, we've lost a cow, we've had our crops damaged. And the idea was, as an NGO, not to replace the government. The government has the compensation payments in place. And over, over two years, we've addressed over 7,000 calls, reached out to 600 people. And I think the point of this is that there are simple technological solutions that will help us fix existing systems. We don't really have to change everything. And the fact that you have to respond to people living next to these parks. These parks were, you know, had very few tigers 30 years ago. Tigers have come back because incredible, um, um, uh, India has a very strong protection system, very good um, NGOs who work in these places. But we also have to deal with the consequences of animals coming back. And then perhaps an even more controversial topic in conservation is the movement of people out of parks. There are many, many very uh, small settlements in many of these parks. And what we found is that there are people in there who want to move. The government has set up um, resettlement packages, and people want to move. And uh, conservationists have always been painted as anti-people and pushing people out. And we have enough work in India that shows that this is a mixed bag. There are parks where people were evicted and, and um, resettlement was done poorly. But there are also parks where resettlement was done well. And the government of India is sitting on over 100,000 applications of people asking to be moved out because they want better education, because they want better schools, because they don't want conflict. 
and we're, we're very lethargic about it. So my question in the, in the sort of the larger frame of democracy and conservation is whose democracy? I think democracy is important. It's important to facilitate mo moving people out. It's important to make sure people are not evicted. But I think just you know, sitting around having these debates rather than trying to figure out um, solutions is, is really essential. And perhaps most of all, I think um, this is a park that I've worked, uh, I went to and saw my first wild tiger when I was two years old. Tigers have come back. They are doing well. They are among the most successful parks in India. But I think we need to look to the outside to look at people, look at solutions that will enable people um, to live with wildlife rather than romanticize all of this. So thank you. Mm -hmm.